this is a very toxic stew right now in America for white women. I really believe that. And who knows what happened to that poor girl who worked at the furniture store in Los Angeles? Did she look at that guy the wrong way? Did something snap because of all the reports that uh, he may have been hearing about white women and how they don't get it and how uptight they are and they're on antidepressants and they're this and they're that? This is pretty crazy stuff. And you saw those media clips from, from earlier. They're fueling it. They're definitely fueling it. We have major, major problems in America. I actually agree with Greg Kelly on one thing. We have major, major problems in America. But one particular problem that I have with this country and the Greg Kellys of the world is, do you believe in intersectionality or not? Do you acknowledge identity politics or not? Now, based on the lower thirds graphics from this opening clip, Greg Kelly and Newsmax wants us to believe that fake news has spent years demonizing white women. And as evidence, he showed footage of white women being attacked, assaulted, or murdered by black perpetrators, by the way, to really drive home the point. Kelly tries to point out how the media spins their own narrative, like he's not the media doing the same thing, but whatever, when they, quote, put the brakes on covering stories like this, even though he's showing the media's coverage of these victims. And we'll get to why he's ultimately bringing this up a little later. But these talking heads were questioning why white women who become victims of violence get more media coverage than their black, brown, and native counterparts. Additionally, those pundits were calling out white women for the harm they cause to others. To Greg, these things are contributing to white women being targeted. Greg Kelly ultimately has a problem with missing white women syndrome. There certainly is a disparity between uh, when you have a missing person of color and a missing white person. When Eiffel, I think, coined the term missing white woman syndrome. To give him credit, Kelly did say that, quote, there are some social slash economic factors that contribute to a disparity in coverage for missing white women over black, brown, and native women. He didn't go into detail, but I will. The existence of this syndrome that plagues the media is due to many factors. Young women, specifically those 21 years old and younger, are kidnapped, trafficked, and murdered at higher rates than any other demographics. Wealth and access to private investigators, along with whether the missing person was actually reported missing, all play a role in the numbers. Also, in an empirical study on the intersection of race and gender as it pertains to media coverage of these cases, white women as subjects accounted for 50% of articles, with the next highest demographic being white men at 17%. This disparity could be due to missing person cases not being reported and the classification or misclassification of Hispanic and Latin people as white depending on the agency. In 2019, CNN looked at cases of missing children in particular and found that in 2015, studies showed that while in an average of 35% of all missing children cases the victim was black, those missing children were only featured in around 7% of media coverage. So think about the tragic story of Gabby Patino from a few years ago. This reintroduced the idea of missing white woman syndrome to the general public. Also though, Jessica Lynch, the U.S. Army soldier who was taken by Iraqi forces and held as a POW in 2003. As history says, she was held for seven days before being rescued and made headlines all around the world. Not only did Lynch, a blonde white woman, condemn the media and the military for exaggerating her story, but it's also been pointed out that she was chosen to be the poster child over fellow soldiers Lori Piastaway and Shoshana Johnson. Piestaway was killed in the attack, a tragedy that made her the first Native American woman to be killed in overseas combat via the U.S. Army. Johnson was captured alongside Lynch, and it made her the country's first black female POW. Yet those weren't the stories in the headlines. Lynch herself called the media out on her return saying, I am still confused as to why they chose to lie and try to make me a legend when the real heroics of my fellow soldiers that day were in fact legendary. This series of bad takes from Greg Kelly stems from the murder of Eliza Fletcher in Memphis. This is a tragedy and it's horrible. The black man who killed her needs to be put under the jail. Her story deserves to be told, but not at the expense of women of color when these things happen to them. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. To see additional content from yours truly, click on the Jeff Wiggins hashtag. You can also find me on my YouTube channel, We Gonna Be Alright. Thanks for watching.